Hey everyone, I'm out here in the garage and what we're going to be doing today is fixing my Craftsman air compressor. So stay tuned. So if you're new to the channel, I just want to welcome you here and hopefully you'll consider subscribing if you like what you see. Also, check out DIY Apprentice on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I post lots of pictures and videos on those platforms before I post anything on YouTube and occasionally I'll post things on those platforms I don't post on YouTube. Also check out the website at DIYApprentice.com and don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video. Uh, so what we're going to tackle today is we're going to work on the Craftsman air compressor that I've owned for about 17 years now I believe and that air compressor recently developed a leak and it's one of these Craftsman uh, pancake compressors, very similar to the Porter Cable. And I know that Porter Cable and Craftsman actually fall under the Stanley Tools brand, so I suspect that they were probably made on the same assembly line or and you know just branded differently. And so the fix that I'm going to show in this video should apply to both the Craftsman and to the pancake style Porter Cable air compressors. So let's get into it. All right, so here's the Craftsman air compressor we're going to be fixing. And I'll turn it on and let it pressurize so you can hear it. So as you can see, air is escaping. So we'll open it up and see what we can find. I've already unplugged the compressor and relieved it of air. So I'll next remove one screw from each side securing the compressor to the tank with the number 3 Phillips. I'll then slide the housing off the tank. The housing screws are recessed fairly deeply so I cut the brand labeling off a couple bit holders then use a Torx 25 bit to remove the three screws around the top. Now you can do this before or after removing the screws but all I did here was cut the labeling at the housing seam so I can separate the two halves. There are also two Torx 25 screws on the bottom that need to be removed. Then we'll just separate the two halves of the housing. Be sure to keep track of these square plastic spacers. They tend to fall out very easily. Now we've got the compressor somewhat apart, we're going to fire it up and see if we can pinpoint where the air is escaping. And yep, there it is right there, right at the rear of the compressor motor. I'll once again relieve the compressor of air and continue with the disassembly. I'll remove the four or five sixteenth bolts holding the rear cover in place, then lift up to detach the hose from the cover. Now 
The culprit is most likely this large ring on the plate. Here's the kit of replacement parts I bought, and I'll include a link in the description below if you need one. It includes a couple flat gaskets, a couple large O-rings, and an O-ring for the hose. We'll start with the O-ring for the hose. The old O-ring is fairly easy to remove, but it can be a little challenging installing the new one. The fit is very tight. You might want to try using a little silicone paste, which should make it easier to slide it onto the hose. I'll then attach the hose to the rear cover. I'll remove the old gasket from the plate, then scrape off any remnants with a putty knife. I'll then remove the old o-ring from the plate with a pick tool. All right, time to reassemble the compressor. I'm going to go with the graphite gasket, so I put it on the cover first, then add the plate with a new O-ring. Then I'll put the compressor motor on top and secure it with two bolts at opposite corners by using the 5 16 nut driver socket. I'll finish up by installing the other two bolts and do a final tightening. I'm not really sure of the torque specs, but I didn't go crazy here. I'm guessing it's somewhere around 20 foot pounds. Next, I'll put the motor back in the front half of the housing, and I add a tiny bit of silicone paste to the plastic spacers to allow the motor to more easily slide back into place. With that finished, I place the housing on top of the tank then I'll install the other half of the cover. I only install the two bottom Torx 25 screws so I can test the compressor before final assembly. Alright, here we go. So far, so good. Let's continue. Alright, so we're somewhere around 100 PSI, still looks good.
Looks good. All right, I'm going to let out some air, then pressurize it again to 150 PSI. Perfect. All right, so before I continue with the reassembly, I'm going to fully let all the air out of the compressor. Next, I'm going to install the three Torx 25 screws around the top of the cover. Then I'll slide the housing back on the tank and install a screw with a number 3 Phillips on either side of the housing. And that's it. All right, so there you have it. There's fixing the Craftsman air compressor. Not too difficult at all. It's really pretty simple to do this. So now that I've replaced the seals, it actually functions much better than it has in years. So hopefully this information was helpful, and thanks for watching.